Hey everyone, thank you for stopping by my channel today. I got a hold of some of the new Makeup Geek eyeshadows that were recently released. There were a total of nine shimmer and nine matte shades. I did not buy all of them because I didn't like all of them and I didn't feel the need to add some things to my collection that I was going to have to store and I had to pay for if I didn't really like them. But I did buy 12. And what I wanted to do today was show you some of those swatches and then also kind of give you some insight into why I selected those particular shadows and kind of what some of my ideas about them are. So if you'd like to see my review on some Makeup Geek shadows, then just keep watching. I mentioned in my April Favorites video, which I will link down below, that these shadows really are some of my favorite shadows. In the past, um, MAC shadow pans used to be the big deal. Originally, I was not used to the Makeup Geek shadows because they had a little bit of, just a little bit of powder pickup, and I was used to MAC where they didn't. But by comparison, I much rather prefer the Makeup Geek shadows that have the powder pickup because with MAC, sometimes they're so densely packed that you can't even get the pigment out. And so give me a little bit of powder pickup as long as you give me pigment, which is what Makeup Geek shadows do. And they have quickly kind of overshadowed my MAC shadows. Overshadowed my MAC shadows. That was a pretty fancy pun right there. Not intended. Makeup Geek shadow pans are historically $6 a pan. Some of her different variations and lines are a little bit more like her duo chromes, I believe. They might run about $10 a pan. But $6 for a shadow pan is incredible. So I'm not gonna talk about these in reference to whether or not they're matte or shimmers, but I will be talking about them, like I said, in reference to kind of what I was envisioning using them for and how I could coordinate some of them together. So the first shadow is called Friend Zone. And it's kind of a muted gray with definitely a soft purple undertone. This to me looked like it would be an amazing um, transition crease shade. So not a deepener, but just a light, subtle transition shade from your lid to your upper brow. And in fact, I am wearing this guy in my crease today as my transition shade. The next one is called Brownie Points. And it is it is brown, but it definitely has a gray undertone to it as well. Whereas, for example, Coco Bear is a, li a little bit more of an orange undertone. This is definitely more of a gray undertone. I envision using this shadow to deepen up my crease when used in combination with the Friend Zone, which is exactly what I'm wearing today. I've got Friend Zone in as my transition, and I've got Brownie Points as a crease deepener. On my outer corner today, I have the shade called Taboo, which is like a black with purple. So this shade I actually really like because of the multiple ways that you can use it. And by the way, all of the shadows, you can use whatever way works for you and whatever you like. This was just my interpretation. But I liked Taboo because I could use this in the outer corner as I have today and coordinated with those first two shadows. You could also use this as an awesome liner, both on your upper lash line as well as your lower lash line. The last shadow that I kind of include in this first grouping um, is called Wild West. It's quite a bit browner, but there is definitely a diluted level of grayness to it as well. So it is by comparison warmer than brownie points, for example. This is Wild West, this is brownie points. So it is a little bit warmer, but it is still not a warm shadow to me. And I felt like it was a little bit interchangeable with, I'm starting to forget the names, with um, brownie points here. But again, along the same lines, just some kind of muted browns with some purpley gray undertones, whereas Wild West has a little bit more of a red assistance to it. So the next trio of shadows that kind of caught my eye, they are all shimmers. By the way, that first grouping was all matte. This next one is all shimmers, and they are of the purple family. I think that purple tones complement and work well with all eye colors, and I'm a big fan of purple for my green eyes. So the first one is very shimmery. This one is called Pillow Talk. It is a soft lilac with a lot of silver reflect in it. Um, really, really pretty, really, really light and brightening on the lid. The next one I got is just kind of a darker version of that. This one is called Toxic. Um, so it's a deeper purple, not quite as much of a silver reflect, but it is definitely shimmery and reflective. There's also like a grayness to this purple while still maintaining 
uh, a certain level of brightness to the purple that it is. How many times am I gonna say purple? The last one I got is called Rebel, and this one is really cool. It's a very light um, purple with some gold reflex. I believe this is the one that she indicated she was considering making a duochrome so that at different angles and in different lights, you would see one shade purple, light purple, and in another viewpoint, you would see the gold shimmer reflex. But I guess it didn't hold up to her standard of duochrome, so she's just calling it a shimmer shadow, which is kind of cool because it's only $6 then. You get it for less money. Um, and I just, this is a really unique color, and I really, really like it, most especially for on the lid. And in fact, that's how I would kind of use, or I would tend to use those last three shadows I just mentioned, all of them purple shimmers. Um, depending on how dark or light I wanna go, I like using those um, all over my lid. The next quad of shadows I wanna talk about made me think of sunsets and summer and warm, but not just kind of those typical bronzy kind of warm summer eye looks. Um, these had these had attitude and I just thought they were really fun and they just really caught my eye. The first one I want to talk about is called Tiki Hut. Ah, that's such a fun color. This is like a mustard brown without too much mustard. I don't like shadows that are yellowy like orange. I don't think they complement my yellow undertones of my skin. But this one has enough brown in it that it allows the kind of mustardness um, to work really, really well. And I use this shade typically in my crease. A shade that you could use either in your crease or maybe on your outer corner is called Tuscan Sun. And I just love this color in and of itself. It's a gorgeous, like, like a melon peach, like a melon pinky peach. Um, I don't typically go for shades like this, but I just, the, the shadow spoke to me. It just called my name out. I just really liked it. And I have used it both to accentuate the outer corner of my eye as well as in my crease. And I also think complements Tiki Hut pretty nicely too, if you were to use a blend of those in your crease as well. The next one that I wanna talk about, which definitely belongs on your lid, although again, up to interpretation, but I feel like the shadow belongs on your lid. It's called Sin City. It is a shimmer and it is a very, very warm gold. Um, so it isn't that yellow gold, but it has enough orange and peach in it that it's just a gorgeous warm gold. And it immediately picks up whatever gold reflex I have in my eye, because I've got green eyes with some gold reflex, and it just complements that, I feel, quite a bit. And so it's very neutral, though, in that you know anybody can wear a gold shadow. So it's just a very warm gold versus being a yellow gold, and it is shimmery. This last shadow of this grouping is what I would call my challenge color. And I again, I just loved this color. It's called Fashion Addict, and it's like, a fuchsia pinky purple. There's definitely more purple than pink though, which I like because I feel like for me anyway, shadows that are too red or too pink make me look like I either didn't get enough sleep or I got in a fight or something. So this one definitely has some purple in it, but it's super bright at the same time while being a deep shade. Um, it is matte and I have enjoyed using this on the outer corner of my eye as well. Although with a shade like this, you can get creative in a million different ways. So I say with this one, just have fun and see what you can do with it. So I actually, I'm taking such a fun shade and I am being very conservative with it so far because I've only ever put it in my outer corner. But I need to step outside of my box and I think this shadow is really pretty. The last one I purchased kind of just needs a pedestal all on its own. This one is called Venom and it is a shimmer shade and it is a gorgeous green shimmer shade. It's got a little bit, like a little bit of olive, a little bit of gold in it, but not quite so olivey and gold. It's a little bit cooler than an olive tone would be. And I think the shadow is just incredible. They are, the shimmer shadows in particular are very thick. You know, it's a thick powder, so it feels almost kind of creamy. The matte shadows, like I said, they are giving you really good 
pigmentation with a little bit of powder but not too much and so i think she's really i think she's hit the formula for creating shadows really really well so those are my comments and swatches on the newly released makeup geek shimmer and matte shadows i hope this was helpful for you in your shopping thank you so much for spending this time with me i'm on instagram and twitter check me out over there if you like this video please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and if you haven't already subscribed please hit the subscribe button so that you can become a member of my g crew i think we're having a good time i hope you are as well i hope you have a really good rest of the day i look forward to seeing you soon and in the meantime thanks hey everyone thank you i forgot my, how to do my own intro would work really nicely together whether you use all all, all of them <laughs> all of them Reach every once in a while, my New York jumps out of my back pocket and right out my mouth. Of um, doing them with them are. Of doing them with them are.